In our last episode, we raced our way to Ziwat Neo to catch up with an old friend. This time around, we spend a little time in one of our favorite stops in Mexico, we figure out what seems to be the theme of the year, and of course, we eat our way through the city. And since we pulled into Ziwat smack dab in the middle of the Sailfest Cruisers Rally, this normally quiet little bay was chock full of boats. All right, we've been full-time wanderers, roamers, vagabonds, whatever you want to call us, for almost five years. We quit our jobs in 2014. 2014, we left to see the world. And in those almost five years, every year there seems to be some sort of theme. Last year, the theme was hanging out in friends. We hung out with friends all over the world and it was great. So far, this year, the theme is stuff keeps breaking all the time. Not too happy about it. Today, it's our stereo. Actually, yesterday was our stereo. It died and we listened to a lot of music on this boat. A lot, actually. So having a non-working stereo, that's just not gonna cut it. Where we are here in Ziwat Nail, there's probably a store around that sells stereos. We haven't seen a stereo store, but in the grocery store, they had stereos. Like every good grocery store, they got stereos. So we got one. So it's only going to be one day without music. This morning, it's getting swapped. Instructions. They're in Spanish. Don't need them. Actually, because I can't read them. I can't see these wires anymore. I'm getting old. I gotta have reading glasses. <sighs> this is depressing. I can see. In the five years or so, almost five years that we've been doing this, the boat has really kind of just worked. Do a little maintenance here and there, odds and ends, but for the most part, it's been almost trouble free. Especially when we're hanging out with other people who are constantly working on their boat, non stop. I know that's a lot of people, but we've been pretty lucky. But our luck has run out. It's happening this year. We're working on it nonstop. It works. Nice job. With some working tunes, Brenda could take care of her coconuts. Step one. Find a coconut. Two, open the coconut. Step three, eat the coconut. Step four, Jeff cleans up the mess. What are you gonna do with all this coconut? I'm gonna make milk. One to go. Yeah. <laughs> Those are some fancy moves. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh man, I love coconuts so much. <laughs> I know. So good. So 
whole process, really. I love the whole process. Like finding the coconut. Taking out your aggression. That's right. And once those coconuts were processed, we were off to check out Zihuatanejo. Zihuat is a picturesque town on a picturesque bay. And even though it's a popular tourist destination, it still holds on to a small town, truly authentic Mexican feel. And in true Mexican fashion, it's a vibrant place full of charm and color, which makes it a perfect place to wander aimlessly. With its wide array of things to see and do, and its laid back atmosphere, Zihuataneo is a really easy place to spend some time. What seems to stand out most to me about this place is the never-ending, wide variety of food. Everywhere you turn, there's something that's begging to be tried. And it doesn't matter if you're at one of the multitude of street-side open-air cafes, or if you prefer what I consider to be one of Mexico's finer features, it's ever-present, cheap and tasty, never-ending supply of street food. Zihuat truly is an eater's delight. And even with all of its options, in Zihuat, there are some things that are impossible to pass up. This spinning, whirling, burning hunk of meat, it makes pure magic on a plate. All for just a couple of bucks, these five tacos can be had with some salsa that is so hot, it'll burn your face clean off. Yep, this place is pure magic. And the next morning, even more magic was coming. What are you making? Coconut pancakes. Oh man, I'm excited. Yeah, I processed the coconut myself. Nice job. Yeah. Brenda's making some coconut pancakes. I love these things. Look at that, it looks delicious. We've been in Zihuatanejo for a handful of days now, and I have to say, this is one of my favorite stops on the Pacific side of Mexico. I tend to have a lot of favorites, but this is one of my favorites. Um, but uh, with everything it's got going for it, there are a few little drawbacks. One, this is a pretty rolly anchorage. There's a lot of movement in this boat. It's almost like we're at sea. This is a pretty full bay right now. There's sail fest going on, so there's a ton of boats in here. But uh, if it weren't so crowded, we'd throw out a stern anchor, keep the bow pointed into the swell, and it would kind of take care of that problem. But right now, 
There's not much we can do about it. Just because every boat's got to be on the same program with a stern anchor. Otherwise, you don't really swing and sink. So, we're going to be rolling. But uh, other than just rolling around, the water in this bay is funky. You don't want to jump off the boat and go for a swim. I guess you can. It's Mexico. You can kind of do whatever you want. But you may come out with an infection. Uh, but that also means that uh, running the water maker in here, we can do it technically. We can run the water maker anywhere, but it just doesn't seem like a great idea. So we just buy water, which is a pretty easy solution around that. But the third thing, as far as cruising goes, there is no fuel dock. So if you make a long journey here, you got to figure out how to get fuel. But um, just like most places in Mexico, there's a guy who gets stuff done. Just on shore, he's got a little stand and he'll kind of get you whatever you need. And whether it's fuel, water, he can do your laundry, pick up groceries for you, whatever you want. He's the guy who gets stuff done for a fee, but it's pretty reasonable. So today we've got water and fuel coming. It'll uh, get us by till we get out of here into the next spot. But for now, it's almost pancake time. And yes, there's a reason I'm so excited about these things. Brenda's freshly processed coconut flour pancakes. These things are incredible. These things are amazing. You should try them. Coconut pancakes are the best. Incredible. And after breakfast, while the Sailfest fleet was heading out for the big race, we were taking care of a few chores. All right, fuel and water, it's pretty simple here. Actually, while we are having breakfast, Ponga came out, they drop off jugs right on the side of the boat. Uh, water comes in five gallon jugs. Brenda's actually out there siphoning right now. And fuel, that comes in 25 liter jugs. For fuel, we're pretty religious about using one of these. It's a Baja type filter, fuel water separator, and it keeps debris out of the tank. In Mexico, we've had pretty good luck with fuel. But we have had some junk here and there. So we're pretty religious about using this. It keeps the fuel clean going in. Man, that sucks. My boat's going out racing. Do you want to go racing? No. We have a stripe. I feel like we raced here. That yeah. was good, right? Yeah. Maybe we just need a little racing break. <laughs> <laughs> and after a hard day of work, of course you gotta round up the troops and celebrate the job well done. <laughs> hey, well. And after getting successfully primed, we were off to this place. And it's a place I've been dreaming about ever since we came here last year. One of the big regional specialties here in southern Mexico is pozole. And so far, I haven't found a place that does it quite as good as here. Even though Brenda went for the tortilla soup, a big steaming hot bowl of pozole from Restaurante Annie's is reason enough to make the long journey to Zihuatanejo. I actually have a bunch already. So How's your soup looking, Ben? It's looking amazing. I'm having a 
Oh, it's funny. I've had some as it's always said, like, line up. Stealing my food. I know. <laughs> Better get used to it, you know? <laughs> But that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. How's yours, Wolf? Really good. <laughs>